Live from News Channel 8 in Tampa, Florida, this is Bucks Bonus on WFLA Now. Powered by 1-800-ASK-GARY. Would you believe it? The injured Buccaneers suffering yet even more setbacks, but sitting pretty atop the NFC South looking for their fourth straight victory as they take on the young upstart Chicago Bears. Hey there, everybody. JB Buno here with you on Bucks Bonus, powered by 1-800-ASK-GARY here on WFLA Now. Great to have Karen Loftus of WFLA Sports here back with us on Bucks Bonus. And yeah, we're talking about the Buccaneers trying to get healthier but then an injury report that comes in a short time ago, Karen, it's not ideal. Can you break down the latest of what we can expect to see this Sunday against the Chicago Bears? Right, so the latest is that Gronk, Antonio Brown, Richard Sherman, um, and Levante David, all those four guys have been ruled out for Sunday with injuries, which Gronk wasn't a surprise. Richard Sherman, Levante David weren't surprises. A.B., he had a, an ankle injury, which I think was a little bit of a surprise to some people. Um, but on the other side, we're not going to have all the negative news. The good news is that Antoine Winfield Jr. did pass concussion protocol finally. So after missing the last two games, he is expected to play on Sunday, which, as you know, the secondary has has taken a beating as far as injuries go. So it's going to be nice to have Antoine Winfield Jr. back out on the field. And Winfield is going to be a welcome presence yeah. without question. Question. Let's talk about AB. Uh, now, if there's a if there's a certain position that you are equipped to suffer a setback as far as an injury, wide receiver is is a is a place where there's significant depth for the Buccaneers. This is still a team that features Mike Evans, yeah. still a team that fe- features Chris Godwin and other pass catchers. Because we were just talking about before the show began how great Leonard Fournette has been in in, in a pass catching role. As of course Cameron Brait. Doing, uh, doing what he has done for so many years, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So the A-B injury doesn't hurt, but I know fantasy owners, yeah, including myself, a little bit, uh, a little bit concerned with the A-B ankle injury. Yes. <laughs> so from a fantasy perspective, It's yes, not ideal. I hear you on that. But as you mentioned, I mean, Tom Brady has no shortage of offensive weapons. And we've seen, I mean, they've been playing it without Gronk for the past several games, and they've been just fine. So you have... Evans, who actually leads the team in the receiving. You have Evans, Godwin, and Antonio Brown, who are all three, like, right at the top. They all have right around 400, 420 yards receiving. So all of those guys, we know that they're reliable. We know that they can get yards. And then we've seen the emergence of the run game. We've seen the emergence of Leonard Fournette just having really, really solid good games uh, in the run game and the pass-catching game. Um, So I don't think there's any doubt in the weapons that Tom Brady has. And he was even saying this week, if they call upon some of the younger guys, if you if you see more from Tyler Johnson, because he's one of the wide receivers that we could see more from with Antonio Brown out, he knows that he has faith in all of them. And Byron Leftwich was saying that as well. He said, these guys know that their number can be called anytime, injuries or not, even just for certain plays. Like Tyler Johnson's played in all of the games. He has seven catches this season for 110 yards. Still looking for his first uh, receiving touchdown or first touchdown at all this season. Uh, but all those guys are, are ready to roll for, for any time that they're they're called upon. Another name, just want to throw it out there. Okay. What's up with Scotty Miller? Scotty Miller. You uh, know, we were just talking about him. I yeah. was like, haven't heard much of him. So Scotty Miller was a was a popular target for Tom Brady or somewhat popular target for Tom Brady yeah, behind, of course, the weapons that he had uh, last year in the Super Bowl run. But Scotty yeah. Miller had some memorable moments for the Buccaneers. So that's just another name. You forget how wide or excuse me, how deep this yeah, wide receiver seriously. core is. Yeah, they, they really are. I mean, uh, and they all have a rapport with Tom from last year. So you add all that together. Um, and it should be pretty interesting. So Tom Brady, just a couple nuggets here about where the Bucks stand and statistically in the league. Tom Brady leads the NFL in passing yards right now. He has 2,064 passing yards, 17 touchdowns to just three interceptions. They have the best passing offense in the NFL right now um, and the, the best rush defense. So you have a couple of statistical categories, offensively and defensively, that the Bucks are leading the league. And you're putting that up against... The Bears, who offensively have been struggling, um, struggling to put points on the board, move the ball. Um, The Bears rank dead last in the entire league Mm. in total offense, pass offense, and sacks allowed. So when I see that, 
I think that the Bucks defense is just going to have a field day against them. I, and I actually asked Bruce Arians about this, and I know he doesn't care about stats. He doesn't care where their opponent is ranked in the league, but I asked him about it anyways. I said, do you feel like your, your defense is going to have a really good game just based on those numbers? And he said he didn't care about the numbers and, of course, said that the team just has to show out um, like they do and, and execute like they do. But in my head, in my personal opinion – I think that we could see a really good game from the Bucks defense. Looking forward to seeing the Bucks defense uh, prove that they are the dominating force, and really they, they have been. It's just been so one-sided towards the, the the front, the defensive front, and we've heard just outstanding reviews from for, for players like Vita Vea uh, on the front, and uh, of course Devin White, who has started to um, started to hear his name called by the play-by-play announcer on, on broadcast more in the last couple of weeks. Um, uh, these, this is, of course, a, a defense right now that is just so struggling in the secondary, and it's about getting healthy in the secondary for the stretch run for when, of course, the Buccaneers, in all likelihood, they're looking at a, a potentially deep playoff run. It's all about that secondary as far as the defense goes. And we talked about this last time, about how, yes, that may be somewhere where they have injuries, but you can make up for that in the pass rush and the pressure mm-hmm. that they're getting on quarterbacks. The front four and what they are able to do is sort of where it starts. And I think that they got a good tune-up against the Eagles running after Jalen Hurts all over the field. Shaq Barrett was all over the field running after him, preparing yeah. for a Justin Fields who they could be in the same situation. So I feel like they are prepared for a mobile quarterback and being able to just make his life um, miserable. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, whether or not it's going to be a, a day of misery for the Chicago Bears. It's the Chicago Bears team that is very much now seeking its identity. Yeah. It feels like an, an eternity ago that we were talking about Andy Dalton being the quarterback of this team. It is the young, promising rookie Justin Fields. Also really banged up at the running back position are the Chicago Bears. Uh, David Montgomery uh, out, Damian Williams out as, as well. Um, if that if that is the uh, if the name is escaping me the, the the there's a running back for the Bears that is on the COVID list and it comes down to Khalil Herbert who yeah, is a rookie. young rookie yeah. running back as well so you have a, a rookie star playmaker perhaps in the making both in Fields and Herbert but they're going up again going up against Vita Vea going up against Devin White going up against mm-hmm. Jason Pierre Paul the Dominican Sue I mean this very very potent front for the Buccaneers so if you're a, a Bears if you're a Bears fan and you want there to be momentum and you want to see Justin Fields show some of that promise in, in a game like this, it's just going to be really hard against that Buccaneers front. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for sure. And a couple other things I want to point out on the injury front in regards to the Bears. I was looking at the injury report that just came out. They have eight players that are listed as questionable, which, as you know, can go either way. But they have a pretty full injury report themselves. Among those that are listed as questionable, Khalil Mack. Not sure if you've heard of him. <laughs> kind of a uh, kind of a stud. kind of a good guy. Uh, he he leads their team with with six sacks, and he he can be a menace. So he is on their injury report with a foot injury listed as questionable. And then also, I noticed the Bears' top two receivers, Darnell Mooney, um, who I actually covered at Tulane in college, very good player. Darnell Mooney and Allen Robinson, their top two receivers, were both on the injury report. So. Something to keep an eye on. Um, if they're listed as questionable, you just never know. And even if they're not at 100%, I mean, even if they do go, if they're not at 100%. So you think if their top two receivers are out, then they maybe try to run the ball or if that's an option. But then if you're running the ball, you're going up against the top rush defense in the NFL. So things look favorable for the Bucks. I'll say that. Could be, yeah. And this was the stretch when you looked at the, the, the schedule when it came out. This was a stretch where you said, you know what? These are games that your defending Super Bowl champion Buccaneer should win. Going yeah. back to uh, the, the Patriots, um, again, a team that, that are seeking an identity. Even though it was Tom Brady returning to Foxborough, there was high optimism that, that the Buccaneers would win that game, and they did. Beating up on the, on the surprisingly disappointing Miami Dolphins, a team that in themselves have suffered significant injuries. The, the, the Eagles as well, not, the, not necessarily the formidable opponent in the same class as the, as the Buccaneers. Now the Bears, the Saints are really up next. And then, of course, talking about the Washington football team right behind them. Mm-hmm. There's some more 
challenging opponents ahead. But this is a stretch where the Buccaneers have been expected to win these football games, and they're taking care of business despite the injuries, Karen. I mean, they, they, despite all the injuries that have been amounting, they're still going out there and, and putting up impressive performances, and it starts with Tom Brady. On Tom Brady, we'll talk about him here just by starting with any concern with the thumb. Is the thumb just no. ancient history? History, yes. Yep. Ancient history. Because he's, he's doing just fine. As um, you'd expect. Yes, exactly. I mean, you've seen him play fairly well. It was the rest of the, I guess it was the rest of the Dolphins game and then the Eagles game after that, that it was, uh, he was dealing with that thumb injury. Yeah. But I don't think that's an issue. Every, we've moved on from it. So Every, and, every so. <laughs> if, he has, if he has just the slightest ache in a, in a, in a, in a joint, it is, of course, front page of news course. because it's Tom Brady. He's 44 years old, and yes, he's leading the league as far as passing. So he's he's doing things we've never seen done before. Yeah. And anytime he complains, even about something oh so little, it just receives enormous attention. So it looks like the thumb is officially in the rearview yeah. mirror, which is great. But let's talk about this age difference. Yeah, so I actually did a story on this yesterday. So... And, this, and, and just to clarify for our audience, the age difference between the starting quarterbacks in this matchup, uh, Justin Fields and Tom Brady. Yeah, so that's pretty incredible. But even just on the Bucks roster, because Tom Brady uh, was talking this week about the difference in age, about how some of these guys are closer to his son's age than his age. So he's like, <laughs> it actually helps me relate to my son a little bit more having such young teammates. But I was looking it up because I was curious. Like, obviously, Tom is 44, oldest active player in the league right now. I think the only active player older than 40, actually. And the next oldest player on the Bucks offense, do you want to take a guess? No, I, I don't even, on the Bucks offense, starting yeah. offense or just offense in general? Offense in general. I, I, me, me, Ryan Jensen? That's, a, that's no. a stab. No, it's no. not Jensen. Wide receiver. Evans? Nope. Evans is pretty young. I think no, Evans I was going to say. No, um, no, yeah, I, Antonio Brown. Oh, wow. Okay. So 33. But he's, so he's insane. 11 years older than the next oldest player and on I, offense. My Is mind, can I defend myself for a second? Yeah. Um, I say Mike Evans only because it feels like Mike Evans yes. has been with the Buccaneers forever. And that's just a logical destination for where the mind goes. Yes. And I just, that's, that's, uh, what about, what, what about Kronkowski? Um, I think he's 32. Yeah. So it yep. was like, it was Antonio right. Brown no, and right. Gronkowski. Gronkowski. Wow. That's, that's incredible. Um, and then, so I was looking at the sort of the breakdown of the roster and nearly half of their 53 man roster is 26 or younger. That's, that's, is that wild? That is wild. And so I just thought that, I mean, I'm not going to start, stop talking about it because it's just absolutely incredible that he's 44 years old and he's so much older than all of these players, but somehow just finds a way to relate to him. And that's what he was sort of talking about is that he says he's able to relate to these players by just caring and showing that he believes in them. He said, growing up through the league, he said, I had great mentors who took me under their wing and they, you know, he said, I can only hope to do that to them. Show that I care. And then also have these like yeah. teachable moments where he can share knowledge with them and relate to them in that regard. But so much of it is just hearing that Tom Brady believes in you. If he looks you in the eye and he says, I know you can catch this ball, Tyler Johnson, I'm coming to you. And, and Tom Brady says that he has faith in you. I mean, that makes these guys mature the and ultimate, have so much more confidence and be able to execute. The ultimate vote of confidence Heck when the yeah. GOAT is telling you that. Yes. And then the age difference between Fields and Brady unreal doubling yeah. in age here uh, uh, justin fields 22 tom brady of course 44 uh, brady has been playing quarterback at a high level for as long as fields has quite literally yes. been alive yes so it's it's just i remember john strang shout out to john on our assignment desk was pointing out that the fact of course making the rounds on social media that this is the largest age gap between starting quarterbacks in nfl history was it and even more than mac jones I, yeah, but I believe oh. so. I believe that it, that that yeah, Fields is younger than Mac Jones. It, well, well, I'll make, I'll make sure of that. But while I check on that yeah. and fact check myself here and fact check John, <laughs> you, you want to just talk about how the difference of, of experience is going to be apparent on Sunday. It's going to be wild to see a 44 year old go up against a 22 year old opposing quarterbacks. Yes, and you think about if if youth is on your side, you like fresh legs, strong arm, and all that. But Tom Brady isn't playing like a 44 year old so I think you can just take that out 
of the argument at all as far as like physical abilities because Tom has shown that he has the abilities of an NFL player in their prime and is playing as such regardless of the number 44. But then the thing that really makes a difference I think is just the experience he has in that he's encountered pretty much every single scenario that you could imagine in football. Yes, every game's different, every possession is different, but when you're in the league for two decades plus, you've seen so many different situations and those past experiences just help you navigate games to come. So I think that that's where you're going to see the biggest difference and just the composure too, the, the confidence that Brady has in himself and in this team, um, whereas the Bears are still trying to figure it out. And you might have some uncertainty or hesitation yep. on Justin Fields' side of the ball. Mac Jones, 23 year, years old. Okay. Justin Fields, 22. So, uh, hey. the, yes, just junior. So it, it, it's, again, I just it, it blows my mind that yeah. we're talking about double the age. I, right, I don't know why. Old enough to I, be his dad. I, I'm his num right. Old enough to be his dad, and and the conversation, of course, online and the social media headlines are: Will Tom Brady be the daddy of the you know baby bears come you know come Sunday? But I'm a numbers guy, and yeah. and just seeing 22 verse 44 and the the age being doubled is just mind blowing to me. Yeah. I can't think of any other instances in professional sports where you're talking about athletes at this elite level. And there being a doubling in age uh, between uh, opposing players on opposing sidelines. It's just I fascinating. Would, I would say maybe baseball. Some of the older ah, pitchers, yes. maybe like a Rich Hill and then or, you know, a super young guy at me, the plate if he was thrown against him. Totally true. And, yeah. and I'll, I'll, I'll be being a baseball guy like yeah. uh, Ken Griffey Sr. and yeah. Ken Griffey Jr. <laughs> yes. Father yeah. and son. Be, that's literal, you know, dad and son being being on, on the yeah. same field of competition at the same time. So. Yes, there is, there is certainly like precedent. Baseball, right. It's just so many people are going to be watching on Sunday and thinking about that age difference between these two quarterbacks. It's going to be great to see. see, see speaking of Sunday, Karen, what are you going to be looking for? Bucks versus the Baby Bears mm -hmm. on Sunday. You mean like score predictions or just like in general, like how I think the game's going to shake out? A little bit of both. Okay. I think we're going to see more Leonard Fournette. I think he's really just earned his spot um, just as a, a consistent contributor on offense. I think you're going to see another big um, passing game from Tom Brady. Most of these games have just been pass heavy, even though we've seen the emergence of the, the run game a little bit, which has been nice to know that they can do that when needed. But I think it's going to be a, um, a pass heavy game. I think that um, defensively, as I mentioned before, I think the Bucks are just going to have a field day. Maybe they're going to finally get get some more sacks they've been getting so much pressure pressure on opposing quarterbacks since the Rams game I think this time they're finally going to get some more um record some more sacks and we're going to see some pressure there um maybe some interceptions maybe Antoine Winfield Jr. is going to come back and get an interception would that's love what I'm going to throw out would there. love to see it in his comeback yeah. game off uh, off of off of that concussion it is the three and three Chicago Bears taking on the five and one Tampa Bay Buccaneers at Raymond James Stadium kickoff 425 Eastern time this Sunday, October 24th, 2021. All over it is Karen Loftus of WFLA Sports. I'm JB Buno here with you folks on Bucks Bonus powered by 1-800-ASK-GARY here on WFLA Now. We'll be back next week to continually, of course, talk about Buccaneers football and hopefully... Hopefully, we get a little bit more healthier as we get even deeper into the 2021-2022 NFL season. For Karen, I'm JB. We'll see you next time, folks, on Bucks Bonus, powered by 1-800-ASK-GARY.